Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, uh, this video is going to be entitled Things Are About to Start Happening to People, and They Will Be Brutal. Okay? And, um, you know, things in the sense of uh, judgments. Okay? And, uh, you know, the Heavenly Father, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, you know, as we say continually over and over and over again. All right, it's getting ready to bring heavy judgment upon people, all right, individually, as well as, you know, uh, 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 by groups. You have certain judgments that, you know, you may have a car crash, four people die in it, all right, and you may have individual judgments, all right, where one person you know, goes to a particular kind of judgment, then another goes to a particular kind of judgment. All right, they're going to be brutal, man. All right, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, all right, is about to start bringing brutal judgment upon people. And we are going to hear about it, and we are going to witness it. All right, whether it be people in your, in your, in your you know, day-to-day -day lives, whether it be people who are Israelites or who know they're Israelites, we're going to hear about it. We're going to see it. And it's going to put fear in us as well. All right. You see, right now, you know, what you have going on is, you know, the world is uh, entering or not even entering. They're in, all right, that that First Thessalonians 5 and 3, that peace and safety. You know, everybody's having a good old time. Hey, summer's here. You know, summer's here. You know, we out to Miami. You know, we out over here. We out to Jamaica. You know, we out over here. You know, let's go have a good old time. You know, oh, the past year was just to teach us that we got to enjoy life while we have it. You know, repent, seek the Lord. Nah, what that got to do with me? You know, why seek the Lord, man? I had, nah, nah, I want to enjoy this life. Guess what? And now uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, you know, you want to, you want to clear your mind or whatnot. Cool. But the thing about these people is they're in a mindset of ignorance is bliss, knowing what they're doing is wrong or knowing they're not doing the right thing, okay, and yet not making an effort to do the right thing, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai is going to judge you. It's not about, oh, well, I'm not doing something wrong. If you're not doing what's right, you're doing what's wrong automatically. That's how the Heavenly Father works, okay? Oh, well, I didn't do wickedness. Well, are you doing righteousness? No, then you're doing wickedness. All right. If you're not doing the commandments of the Lord, if you're not seeking the Heavenly Father, if you're not seeking Yahweh Shai, judgment is coming your way, man, because the hedge of protection is only upon those that are fearing and serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4. Judgment is coming. All right. Judgment is coming. And it's going to be a matter of who's going to be exempt. All right. It's not going to be a matter of who's going to who's who the judgment is going to go for. Or let me select this person to judge. No, everybody's going to get judged. It's just going to be a matter of who's going to be exempt from that, 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 you know, the dangerous judgments. And like we keep telling you, man, it's going to be brutal. It's going to come out of nowhere. And if you're still alive after it, your life is going to be completely changed for however long you might have left. So it says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And there are constant abominations being done in the midst thereof. You got people talking about Pride Month. You got people talking about all this, that, and the third. Okay? Like everything is all sweet. Not a care in, in the world. You should be afraid, okay? You should be seeking the Lord, all right? But, and and anyway, this mark here is, is, is not literal, all right? This 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 mark is spiritual. When you go into the word of Tawa, which means an exemption, exempt from judgment. Why? Because we're crying for the abominations that are being done in the midst of us, that are being done in this world. We're calling for a righteous world. We want things to be set right. Okay? Now, this is verse 4 is one portion. Now, what happens to the rest? 
And to the others, he said among hearing, go ye after him through the city. Go after him. And that's what's going to happen. Judgment is going to go after you. It's going to chase you down, man. It says, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite, meaning to kill. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. That's why it's going to be brutal. It's not going to be just average deaths. Oh, yeah, the person is in a car crash. Oh, he got shot. No. Lord's going, the Lord is going to put people through some excruciating things, man. And we're going to see it and we're going to, oh, my gosh. Whether it's celebrities, like I said, people you may know, people in your life. And, and and then and then it's gonna feel it's gonna be weird because it's gonna be like at first it might seem like coincidence, but then you're gonna notice a trend. You're gonna notice the trend of brutal, insane, unthought of judgments rapidly happening to people. Alright, those that you know the Heavenly Father sees fit. One day you hear a story about your cousin, your, your friend here, then your friend's friend, and yo, what the hell is going on? You know, people are just getting it left and right. You know? It says, um, slay utterly, verse 6, old and young. Yo, this old lady got attacked by a wild-ass piranha or, I don't know, alligator ripped her in half. Some, I don't know. You know? All right? It says, slay utterly, old and young. This little infant boy went in, but with judgment. Okay? And when you see the, the aftermath of the judgment, you're you going to be shook. You know, you see somebody split in half completely. You know? Arms ripped off. Arms shot. I mean, hey, man, even the things we can imagine as horrific don't even come close to what the Lord has, man. You ever seen that show, A Thousand Ways to Die? Well, a lot of people are about to go through a, a infinite ways to suffer and then die. And we're not saying that just because, oh, we're just evil. Ha ha, yeah, no. This is the Lord said this is going to happen. It's set. It's going to happen. We're just warning you. Yeah, we're supposed to sound scary. We're supposed to sound make it sound very very bad because that's what's going to get you scared. And through that fear, you turn and you you repent. Okay? So slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children. Now, it doesn't matter if you're pretty or you're ugly, if you if you're an old lady or you're a young man or a little child. That's got nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. It will not give you an ounce of favor in the sight of the Lord. The Lord doesn't care about your appearance. He cares about your spirit. He cares about your, your inward thought, your actions, your deeds. Okay? So the judgment is going to go after everybody. But what? But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Not the mark of the beast, all right, but the mark of exemption. And begin at my sanctuary, 1 Peter 4 and 17. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And we keep saying it, and we keep saying it, and we keep saying it, but Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is about to act, man. Amos 3 and 7. The, for, let's go to it. All right. There's a reason when a certain vibration comes down, and we keep pushing it, and we keep pushing it, and we keep pushing it through the Spirit, is because. The Lord is, is letting us say it before he does it. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Does that mean that the Lord ain't going to do anything at all? No. But before he does things, he reveals it to us. All right. And we warn you. Okay. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, all right, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So there are actual spirits that are created to judge people, to hurt people, to put people in pain, to, 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 to brutally inflict damage upon people They're, the lord has created spirits specifically for that fire and hail and famine you think famine is a, is a light thing you think famine is an easy thing when you're starving and there is no literally no way to escape this pain to escape this all whatever else it comes with 
because it, it could lead to diseases as well as your we your immune system gets weakened then your body starts to basically consume itself from the inside out since it has nothing else to, to consume and then your head gets all big you look anorexic and then your stomach is all inflated you know and you, you're not going to die in a matter of three hours if you don't eat. You're gonna, it's going to be a slow death. Okay? It says, and death, all these were created for vengeance. And, and, and these people have never really experienced a famine before, man. They don't, they don't, they don't know what, a, what hardships are. That's why they're having a good old time. Mean, meanwhile, these, these are the things that are coming. This is what's coming up the horizon. This is what's coming. It's cutting the corner, coming after your ass. All right? Teeth of wild beasts. You hear that? Wild beasts. You're not, you're not, you're not petting them. You're not taming them. They're wild. Okay? Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. And that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to start punting. And that's why I said, things are about to start happening to people and they will be brutal, man. A wild ass animal just devouring and, and ain't nothing that's going to, man, man. All right. Verse 31, they shall rejoice in his commandment. So when the Lord gives a command, yo, kill this person. Those spirits that are created to, to do that, they're going to rejoice. Okay. They're going to rejoice. And shall be ready where? Upon earth. That's why it also says warn to you that, that the inhabitants of the of the earth, man. You you man, the scriptures talk about evils, even then shall evils grow upon the earth. And these evils are growing and they're ready to come upon who? Where do you think these evils are going? Where do you possibly think these evils are going? You think yeah, how about Shemiel Shah is creating all this evil for what? To to show you a good time? To demonstrate things to you. He's going to demonstrate, but you're going to be the demonstration. All right? You're going to understand what a famine is when you're starving to death. Okay? It's going to be a lesson in itself, but you're going to be a part of the lesson. It says, um, And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And we're in that time of need. This world needs to be judged. Brutal judgments need to go out. Examples need to be made out of people so that they can learn and repent. But where we're at, the elect ain't going to need that. The elect are going to repent regardless. The rest of the world, you're going to want to repent after the examples are being made. And you're one of them. But there ain't going to be no chance for repentance then. Okay? And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. All right? Ain't no death angel, no spirit created for vengeance going to undo or turn around and disobey the Lord. It's impossible. It will not happen. Okay? It will not happen, man. So they're going to come. They're going to bring that, that pain. People are going to experience pain, man. Let's look up the word pain. All right. Let's see. Pain. It says physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. Some synonyms are uh, aches and pains, soreness. Uh, no, hold on. All right, you have here discomfort, torment. All right, pricking, stab. Okay, soreness, suffering, agony. Let's look up the word agony. Extreme physical or mental suffering. And that's what the Lord is about to bring, man. He, he knows your genetic makeup, what makes you tick. All of that, the Heavenly Father is in control of. You You fail to understand that when, let's say you, you, you break a bone or you, you twist, your finger gets twisted or something like that, right? That hurts, right? Because you have pain receptors, you know, you, you, your body feels pain. Now, you do, you do you think that the Most High cannot put you in a position of pain and then increase your pain receptors to a level you've never experienced before where even the slightest touch hurts and then he hits you with, some dangerous, painful things. That is why you got to fear the Lord, man. Okay? The Lord got you burning, but you're not dying. You're just feeling the burns. Shit. That's not fun. 
Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to go here. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 19. And this is what's about to happen, just like it happened back then, during the time of Abraham, all right, to Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. And see, as we're about to read, when the Lord told Abraham what he was about to do, let's read that. Genesis 18 and 19. When he told Abraham this, Abraham tried to plead for the city. We ain't going to try to plead for the city. We're, we're not trying to plead for the city, man. And, and it would be pointless if you did because just like Abraham tried to plead for the city, it, it, was, it was to no avail. The only people that got delivered were Lot and his, you know, his family. Everybody else got the work. Okay? And the scriptures tell us that what happened back then to Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of... For anybody that wants to live ungodly afterwards. And then you have a perfect candidate. Right now. America. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah. What made Sodom and Gomorrah so bad? Was it the land? Was the land Sodom and Gomorrah just bad in itself? No. Okay. It was the people living in that land that made that area polluted. So the Lord is going to judge that place because of the people. With the people included. So now, is America, all right, bad? Is the land America, the land here that we're on, is, it, is the land itself bad? No, it's the people on the land. They're the problem. The land is still going to need to be cleansed, but they're the problem. So when a judgment comes, it's coming for the people. When we say America is going to be destroyed, we're, it's starting with you Americans. <laughs> all right? You make up America. So it's going to start with you. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Now, they were, they were going about thinking everything was all sweet. They didn't see a problem with what they were doing. But as the scriptures say, Lot was vexed with their filthy conversation, with their filthy lifestyle. They didn't see a problem with it. Now They probably thought, well, you, you just want to oppress us. You just want to trouble us. That's how people think today. People go around thinking that their regular lifestyle is, is not a problem. It's fine. It's good. And if you mention anything about it, you're just looking for something. You're just nitpicking. No. We're telling you that your lifestyle does not live up to the standard of the creator. The one who put you here, you're not doing what he put you here to do. That's a problem. And we're warning you that if you don't start doing what he put you here to do, well, he's going to take you off. <laughs> you know, he's going to take you out. Okay? So it says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Okay? Meaning the cry, the wickedness, the sin came up to the Lord. And 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 what what where else is spiritual? It's spiritual, right? In Genesis 18, the Lord is in Genesis, the first book, right? Genesis 18, the Lord says this about Sodom and Gomorrah, that their cry is great and their sin is grievous. And then when you go to Revelation, the last book, 18, all right, and five, it talks about the sins of Babylon. All right, reaching onto heaven. And the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah reached onto heaven. That's why the Lord brought came down and destroyed that place. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read Revelation 18 and 4 and 5 and then come back. So it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And, they, and that's going to be when the elect get delivered out of this place, man. But even before that, Micah 2 and 10, you have to arise and depart mentally. You have to disconnect yourself spiritually from this world, from, from the way people live their lives and do things. Verse 5, for her sins have reached onto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. So was it the actual land that sinned? No, the people that are on it, and they're going to pay, Okay. So going back to Genesis 18, it says, verse 21, I will go down now 
and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, meaning the report of what is going on over there. I'm gonna go see if that's what they if 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 it's if it matches. It says which has come on to me, and if not, I will know. But for this land, the Lord ain't gotta do that. We're, we're, we're the angels are giving him a report. We're daily. In Ezekiel 9 and 4, when you cry, you sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst of it, that cry goes to the Heavenly Father by Hashem Yahweh And he doesn't even need to come and check. He already knows, man. Verse 22, And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city, Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do at, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So Abraham was trying to plead for that land, saying, well, you know, what if, what if there's, you know, peradventure, right? Maybe there might be, you know, some righteous people in the city. All right. Cause Lot was there. Okay. So maybe there might be some righteous people in the city. You know, you, you're, you're a righteous power. You won't just, you're not going to destroy the righteous and the wicked, you know, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Verse 26. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. But as you keep on going down, all right, Abraham reduces the number, reduces it, reduces it, reduces it. But guess what? It w it never hit the mark. Let's actually jump down here. This is uh, Genesis 18 and 32. And he said, oh, oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy for 10 sake. See, so from 50 to 40, to 30, to 20, all the way to 10, all right, the Lord said, if there were even 10 righteous people in there, I wouldn't destroy it, verse 33, and the Lord went his way, as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham turned on to his place, but guess what, Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed, meaning not even 10 people in the whole land were righteous, okay, and when you come to this place and you take out the elect, ain't none. None, man. None. And then the thing about it is, you got Israelites who the judgment is coming for. Really, it's coming for everybody. But there's judgment coming for you. And those that, we, we should all be concerned. But those that should really, really be concerned are the ones who are lax. They're relaxed. They're like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You know, we out here. Hey, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is about to bring great judgment upon this place. It's about to be brutal, and, and it's about to be scary, and it won't stop, okay? It won't stop. Once once the Lord starts, once I start, I don't stop, <laughs> all right? It's not going to stop, man. And people are going to be begging. They're going to want to listen. They're going to want to be obedient. But if you're not of the elect, you're not getting any mercy, man, all right? So with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.